Welcome back to Texas Made Simple. I'm your host, Carlton Dennis. And today we are gonna go over how many LLCs you need with your investment properties. Now, if you're someone who already owns rental real estate, you may have already set up an LLC. And you might be wondering if it makes sense to have an additional LLC for another investment you could be purchasing. Or you might be someone who hasn't purchased rental real estate yet. And you wanna know if it makes sense to buy real estate inside of an LLC or if it makes sense to have an LLC for every single investment property. So in this video today, we're gonna to talk about that. We're also gonna discuss whether or not it's gonna make sense for you starting out to have multiple LLCs to build your wealth strategically. Let's dive in. Now today I'm gonna to be behind my iPad, share with you guys a little bit more conceptually why I look at LLCs like baskets of eggs. And so we're gonna jump over onto the screen. Now, when I think about asset protection, the first thing I think about is having a revocable, sorry for my spelling, a revocable living trust. And part of the reason why I wanna have a revocable living trust early on is because I know that at the end of the day, if something were to happen to me, if I have children, my wife, I want to make sure that my wife and my children do not have to deal with the banks and wait six to 12 months to figure out how the banks are gonna disperse my wealth to my children and how much the banks could possibly take from the wealth that I earned. It would be really horrible if I got in a position where my property that I worked really hard to repair and improve and earn rental income from that I wanted to pass off to my children, that it actually ended up going to the banks first and that my children ended up actually paying more taxes all because I didn't set up a revocable living trust and it can also help your children get the step up in basis. So at the very least, we wanna have a revocable living trust. Everything else comes underneath the trust such as LLCs and assets underneath the LLCs. So what I do directly after drawing a revocable living trust is I like to draw a line down the page. I separate my assets from my operations. Why do I do this? Well, I'm a business owner and I'm also a W-2 employee. And I know that anytime that I'm working for my money, that is called earned income. It's different from passive income. So I am on the operational side as a W-2 employee, and I'm also on the operational side with my S corporation for tax alchemy. Now, I also own rental real estate, and I also own syndication real estate. And the assets I own are sitting inside of LLCs. So I keep those assets on the left side of my page, knowing that they're all passive, okay? now. Let's just say we have multiple rental properties, right? Let's say we have three. And let's say these properties that we purchased are in Indianapolis, Indiana. And let's say I only put a down payment of 20% down on a $70,000 property. So I paid about $14,000 for each of these properties. So let's say this first one here is 70K, the second one here is worth 70K, and this third one here is worth 70K, okay? now. We can tell right off the bat that these three properties in total have about $210,000 worth of value, right? Of course, I owe the banks. I know the banks kind of have a little bit of stake in my property as I'm paying back the lenders, but there's about $210,000 here on the table between these three properties. Now, if I were to establish an LLC for these properties, I have all three of my rental properties sitting inside of one LLC. You may say, Carlton, isn't that a little bit risky for you to have all of these properties inside of one LLC? Because if something were to happen to this first property and this tenant decides to sue you, aren't you likely to be sued and lose money from this property? You might have to sell this property in the event of a lawsuit. The answer is yes, I could, but I have to realize something as well. In a perfect world, I am going to have LLCs for every single rental property. But I also have to realize how to build wealth strategically. And in certain cases, it may not make sense for me to have multiple LLCs for very cheap, low market properties that are only $70,000, 
knowing the cost associated with me having an LLC. So we have to take into consideration the expenses associated with having this LLC, right? I have to file the tax returns for the LLC. That's gonna cost me anywhere between $600 to $1,000, depending on who you go to. You're gonna have to pay the franchise tax for the LLC. If it's in California, that's automatically $800. Right? And then you also are gonna to wanna to make sure that you're setting up the LLC, which could cost you about $1,000 as well. So all in, all in, you could be at about $2,000 to $2,500 just to get your LLC operational and to have it going on a yearly basis. Now, between these three properties, they may be only spitting off about two to $3,000 for you a year. And you might say, Carlton, well, does it make sense now for me to set up an LLC for every single property if I'm only capitalizing on two to $3,000 a year in passive income from the amount of money I'm receiving from my property after paying the mortgage, after paying my insurance, after paying all the other things that I have to pay on this property? Does it make sense for me to, to cough up this additional $2,500 every single LLC? And the answer is probably gonna be no. So this is when we have to start looking at LLCs like baskets of eggs. How many eggs do I want sitting inside of one LLC? Which means how many rental properties do I feel comfortable having inside of one LLC in the event that someone could come and knock over my baskets of eggs and everything could be liable and susceptible to being taken, right? So let's go over another example. Let's say that these properties that we had now, instead of being $70,000, let's say we had a property that's 100K. And then we have a property that's 500K. And then we have a property that's 1.2 mil, okay? Now we're in a situation that's a little bit different before. We're in a situation where we have three properties, but this total value of these properties is upwards to 1.7, 1.8 million. This is where I'm starting to get a little nervous. I have 1.8 million dollars worth of assets all sitting inside of one LLC. Mm, it's kind of getting hard for me to think that this is a smart thing for me to do. And the reason why I'm saying that is because if I'm someone who can afford a $1.2 million property, if I'm someone who can afford a half a million dollar property, then I might want to look at separating those two assets from my little $100,000 property that really comes with about a $20,000 down payment. So. My wealth here is all jumbled up inside of this LLC. And if anything were to happen where my tenant living in my $1.2 million property all of a sudden slips and falls or a light bulb falls out of the ceiling magically and hits him over the head and he decides he wants to sue me, he can now sue my LLC for everything that is inside of my LLC. The equity I own in my $1.2 million property my equity inside of my half a million dollar property and the equity I have in my $100,000 property all can be susceptible. Whether the properties are in the same state or they're all in different states, if I placed the title in the name of the LLC for every single property, I am now in a position where I could get hurt. So this is where we have to start setting up some rules for ourselves. When do we start moving things out of one LLC and separating them to multiple LLCs? This answer is going to be different for every single person. And part of the reason why is because it all depends on when you bridge the gap to getting into rental real estate. You might be a person who is in your mid forties and now you're just now deciding to start this whole real estate journey. Or you could be someone who's young and doesn't have a lot of cash. And you're trying to get into real estate so you can get to a place where you have a lot of cash. So the barrier to entry determines when you're gonna start setting up LLCs and whether or not you're gonna have multiple LLCs as you're buying real estate. If I'm someone who's sitting on money and I'm in a great position, absolutely, I'm gonna have an LLC and buy my rental properties in an LLC and sacrifice the extra money, the $800 to California, the, the tax preparation fees to have my LLC, knowing that I'm in a great position to start things off the right way with the best asset protection. Now, if I'm someone who's sitting on very little cash, I wanna take action and I wanna take action in the best ways possible. Insurance is gonna cover me for accidents and incidentals. It's not gonna protect me in the event of a lawsuit, but it is gonna cover me for accidents and incidentals. And I could still be liable in the event someone tries to sue me. I haven't separated the liability from myself because I didn't set up an LLC, 
but at least I have insurance, right? And this insurance company can come in, support me, help me pay for something in the event that something arises as I'm getting started out in, as an investor. And maybe as an investor, early on, you're not buying huge apartment complexes, maybe just because you can't afford it yet. So you are buying some of these cheaper properties in the Midwest to develop your cash flow before you maybe 1031 exchange or decide to sell those properties to get into another one. So when you are acquiring real estate and you're starting out, one thing is for certain, you do need to have an LLC. But the next thing that you have to take into consideration is what are the expenses that I'm gonna have to have this LLC and is it going to impede my cash flow because I'm running a business? And so that is important. We want to be a profitable business. Oh, nah, I never knew that. I never knew that. Now, going back to what we uh, have here on the recording, keep in mind that we put the operations on the right side. So if you happen to have a wholesale business or you're flipping real estate, this is considered active income, not passive income. And part of the reason why is because when you're doing wholesaling, you're hustling, you're getting on the phone, you're finding a motivated buyer, you're getting property under contract with the seller, and you're flipping a property pretty much without ever owning the property. That requires work, it requires you getting on the phone and it requires you doing something. Wholesaling is a job, just like flipping is a job. The difference between flipping is you actually own the property and you're making repairs and then you are the person that's selling the property yourself. So you're part of the entire transaction. But anytime you're doing wholesaling and anytime you're doing flipping, you're gonna to wanna to do this out of an entity structure as well. Most of my wholesalers and most of my flippers start out with an LLC and then we switch their LLC to an S corporation when the benefits outweigh the cost. And the reason why I say we start out an LLC and then switch to the S corp is because a lot of my clients who get started in wholesaling or get started in flipping, they have these extravagant goals to become the multi-million dollar flipper, the person that they saw on TV, the TV show that they were watching. They, they are so motivated to make tons of money in flipping. One thing you have to understand when you're getting started in flipping is you will learn a lot getting started in flipping. You'll have some pitfalls, you'll have some hurdles, and you'll run into some mistakes where you don't end up making as much money as you thought you could make. Rather than starting out as an S corporation and filing taxes as an S corp, which is more expensive, and paying to have an S Corp, which is more expensive, we start out as an LLC and then we grow our income inside of our business. Typically, you wanna get your net income after all expenses to over 40,000 so we can start switching you to the S Corp and you can take a salary out of your business. Not only does it help you reduce your self-employment tax, which I discuss on multiple videos. If you don't know what self-employment tax, please visit one of my other videos, but it will also allow for you to get a deduction when you decide to pay yourself. Now, the next question that's probably coming up in your head is, Carlton, but now that I see that you have this idea around not having too much equity inside of an LLC and that you view it as a basket of eggs, so where should I set up my LLC? And should it be in Delaware? Should it be Wyoming? Should it be Nevada? I want you to understand something. First things first, I'm an enrolled agent, which means I have the highest designation that the IRS physically allows, but I'm not a tax attorney. But any tax attorney any type of attorney will tell you that it makes sense to set up your rental property in the state you own your rental property. And part of the reason why is because when you choose not to, you're categorized as a foreign entity to that particular state, which means that you're going to end up still having to file the state filing fee in that state you're still going to have to pay the state filing fee in your original state. Plus there's gonna be additional documents that we need to file inside of your tax return that ends up making your tax return more expensive with your CPA or your enrolled agent. So before just jumping onto the Delaware and Wyoming train because you heard about all the beautiful benefits they can give you and how your name is gonna be hidden underneath your mattress, right? First do some homework on why it might make sense to set up your LLC in the state that you own your investment property. Okay. Now it's different than when you're operating as a wholesaler or a flipper. Where you live and where you reside is where your entity structure is set up. It doesn't matter if you're doing online sales, or you're doing e-commerce, your entity structure is going to be set up in the state that you earn your income. And if you're in Nevada, California, Texas, then that's the state where you set up your entity as a wholesaler or a flipper. Now keep in mind, LLCs are just one vehicle for asset protection. 
on top or underneath the revocable trust, right? So you have this layered effect here, kind of like a pyramid where the revocable trust sits on top, then there's the LLC, and then you have your asset, which is the rental property underneath. Now, real estate is gonna to continue to be one of the best asset classes to invest in, but you need to have a tax plan before jumping into real estate. If you have any questions on whether or not an LLC is right for you, whether or not you should be setting up multiple LLCs, whether or not you should be considering Delaware, Nevada, Wyoming, or Texas, feel free to schedule a free consultation by visiting the link in my bio with my team. Also, if you like this video and you wanna learn a little bit more about real estate taxes and how it all plays into you building wealth, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. It'll help out the YouTube algorithm so I can continue to create powerful content like this for you. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Over and out.